Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be talking about makeup I either very rarely or never use in my collection. So I am planning to actually reorganize the majority of my collection. Um, I think it's going to be next weekend, we're going to Ikea to finally pick up another set of Alex drawers. Don't worry, I will be filming that. I'm going to do like a half vlog, half reorganization video, so that'll come up in a couple of weeks. But in preparation for that, I started just going through like my makeup and trying to like take stock of what I already have, just to make it a little bit easier to kind of like envision where stuff is going to go later and while I was doing that I saw Smoky Glow come out with a video that was makeup I never use and I was like that's such a good video idea <laughs> and so I kind of stole it I'll have her video um, linked up in the cards but I really wanted to go through my collection pick out products that I never use and like talk about why I never use them and why I still have them so I've got like this bag full of products I literally went through every section of my collection and pulled out products that for whatever reason I really rarely use and i've got some more products over here so it's gonna be a bit it's gonna be kind of a long video so go ahead and grab a snack get comfy and let's start so for some of these products it's actually like the product category that i, I just never reach for or use in any of my makeup routines and for some of them it's like the specific product itself like maybe i use products in that category but this specific product i just haven't reached for in like at least a year so i think i'm gonna start out with the number one product that like i just never use and i don't know why like I still have the section of my collection. It's always there as like a just in case kind of thing. But lip liners. I never use lip liners. Like almost ever. <laughs> and it's mainly because I barely use bullet lipsticks, which is going to be another section coming up. Um, but I've got these lip liners right here. And I gotta admit, I don't think I've touched any of these in at least six months to a year. I used one today. I'm actually wearing this little mini from Marc Jacobs today. I'm um, excited to wear a, a bullet lipstick. But even when I do like pull out a bullet lipstick to use the, the rare times that I do use them, I don't use the planner. I don't know. I, I never really saw the need for them, especially because when I'm wearing a bullet lipstick, I know that it's going to be transferring. You know, it's not going to be 100% perfect. And the way that I've seen lip liners use is that you really like overline, either overline your lips to make them bigger, which I've never felt the need to do because I feel like my lips are a decent size. Or the other way is like completely filling in your lip line before pulling on a bullet lipstick, which to me, that never really felt comfortable and I never really enjoyed doing it. So I never did that either. <laughs> so I've got these and they're literally in here as like a just in case I might ever need one. I've got like some mauve ones. I've got, this is the closest one to a nude that I have for me my skin tone I've got some from Urban Decay that are like pinky I have one red and then I have one green and that's it and I, ne I like never touch these I really don't so like if I'm being realistic I should declutter them but like again I keep them as like a just in case I ever need a lip liner they're here what about you do you guys use lip liners at all Next, like I already mentioned, uh, bullet lipsticks. So there are a couple of bullet lipsticks that I do go back to and use every now and then, but I pulled these out specifically because I keep them because one's a MAC lipstick. This is like my only full-size MAC lipstick, and I got it when I did a Back to MAC a while ago. And this is my only full-size Urban Decay lipstick. And they're both nudes from my complexion, or this one's like more of a deep nude. Um, but the one I'm actually wearing today is the MAC. And this is in Flesh Pot, which is like a really kind of a gross name when you think about it um but bullet lipsticks i don't wear because of this so it's dr it's really dry I, I hate matte bullet lipsticks that's just never something that appealed to me so i actually threw a gloss on over this and you can see it's like peeling away it's not super comfy it's just it's not really my style <laughs> and i know this but i still have these bullet lipsticks Again, so I feel like these are like my just in case bullet lipsticks. I have a, like I said, I have a couple of bullet lipsticks that I reach for every now and then, specifically like the reds or like the color lipsticks. I reach for like black bullet lipstick. I have a green bullet lipstick, uh, but like these, like the nudes. And whenever I look for like a nice nude to wear, I'm not reaching for a bullet lipstick. I'm always going for like a nice, comfortable liquid lipstick, either a satin finish or a matte finish. I never think, oh, I want a nude lip. Let me get a bullet lipstick. So that, that's my bad. I probably shouldn't have bought these. But I, I just, I feel like I like having them around because of like the brand and the packaging. Next, I have a category that I've gotten slightly better at reaching for, but still like I almost never grab these when I shop my stash. And that's loose highlighters. I am so bad at using loose highlighters. I've been trying to use this Kylie one a bit more, especially because I decluttered it and then I brought it back into my collection. I'm wearing the highlight today. Personally, I think this is just a little too bright for every day, like if I'm going, if if I was going to the office, where? It'd be a little too bright, a little too glittery. 
Um, I almost thought it was too much to wear on my video calls, but I realized with my current lighting and my current work setup, it doesn't show up like crazy bright. It just looks it looks like I'm wearing a highlight, but it's not like bananas, you know? So I have been wearing this one the last couple of weeks. Um, I did this up on my last shot my stash. If you missed that, I'll throw it up in the cards. But I really struggled for this because really the, my default for using this is just inner corner highlight, which is also how I'm wearing it today. And to be quite honest, I believe I used this Sailor Moon loose highlight from Geek Chic Cosmetics like, I want to say a year, year and a half ago, and I haven't touched it since. And then I have these loose highlights from um, Crow and Pebble. And I love the rest of the Crow and Pebble products that I bought, but to be honest, the loose highlight is probably the one I, I use the least, is the loose highlighters. And this one's a mini, like a sample size of a loose highlighter, and this is a full size. And to be honest, I should have probably just gotten two of the samples, because I'm never going to use up this much loose highlighter. Same with the others, like this, I'm never going to use this up. Even if I intentionally try to pan these, I don't think I'm ever going to pan them. So they're great value for your money. I think if you only had like one go-to highlighter, I think having a loose highlighter would be a really great option because like literally how long would it take you to finish that up? But for someone who has a huge highlighter collection specifically, these probably weren't a great choice for me. So like I said, I'm gonna try and start reaching for them more. That's actually the purpose of this video is for me to like realize what am I not reaching for and like try to reach for it a bit more. So I'm already trying to use the Kylie one a bit more. I think the next one I might bring out I might try the Crow and Pebble one because I know the Sailor Moon one is very silver, very sparkly, so it might be too much even on my webcam work videos, um, but I really want to use the Crow and Pebble ones. All right, the next product is actually a color corrector. This is a green color corrector from LA Girl. I, when I first got into makeup, this is like, I want to say like 2015, 2016, color correcting was everywhere. I think one of the first products I ever bought from, um, Sephora. It was like eyeshadow palettes and then a color correcting palette. I had this huge palette which was just color correcting. I had no idea how to use it, um, but I did color correct for a long time. I used to color correct green all around my cheeks because I do get uh, very flushed cheeks. Even when I'm just doing everyday things, my skin just flushes. Annoying. <laughs> and I used to color correct under my eyes. I used a salmon color corrector because I do have dark um, bags under my eyes. Now the green one. I, I've I go back and forth using salmon under my eyes every now and then, really depending on how bad that they look. But I hadn't touched this green color corrector to actually color correct in a long time. I recently did a declutter, not recently, but like right before I moved, I did a declutter and I wanted to hold on to this because at that point in time, I was doing some research into complexions and about how I really could not for the life of me, like confirm if I'm like warm toned or cool toned. And like my Mac, I went to Mac to get color, like not corrected shade matched <laughs> a couple of times over the past couple of years and each time it like flip-flops I get a cool tone and then I get a warm tone because I can tan really really dark and it seems like whenever I do tan I tend to get a warm tone concealer foundation shade and then whenever I'm this pale <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually been this pale in my life this is the palest I've ever been it's like I'm really really cool toned um but cool tone foundations look off on me so what I found out is that if you have an olive complexion if you mix in a green color corrector to your foundation, it's supposed to help you uh, match better. So that's why I kept it. And I had not used it at all for that until today. So I literally wore my MAC Shade Match Foundation. This is the Studio Fix Fluid. So I wore this, and this was the last one I got Shade Match to. This is NW13. So I mixed in a little bit, and my, by a little bit, I mean too much of the green color corrector. And to be honest, it was way too much. I had to put concealer all around the rest of my face because I feel like I just put way too much of the green color corrector in there. Um, I do want to try it again with a lot less green color corrector to see if maybe it helps that foundation shade match me the best. But that was the first time that I've picked Picked this up I think since ooh, it, this was open when I used it so I think I used this when I first bought it like a year or two ago and then I haven't touched it since so um, I'm not really into the actual color correcting anymore but I feel like I will hold on to this and actually try to start mixing it with foundations now to see if it maybe helps these different foundations match me so we'll see how that goes but this is something I just again I never really used can you see the sweat? It's starting to get summer. Like today, oh god, let me see. Yesterday in New Jersey, it was actually pretty chilly. And then today, it's like 97 degrees. I'm not ready for the summer, guys. I don't want, I don't want the summer. <laughs> I'm ready for fall already. Can we just like, I wish we could fast forward through summer. Like, I, I, I will take a crisp fall day. I will take a snowstorm over a day at the beach, over the summer, any day. I just, I don't like summer. Like you can see my sweat. Just pretend you don't see it. Just ignore it. <laughs> All right, next, a category of product I just never use. And I got this actually like by accident. This is a brow pencil. 
I don't use brow pencils and I learned that the hard way. I just have really thick, coarse brows and pencils for me just don't work with how I want to get my brows to look, right? Um, I've tried brow pens, I've tried brow pomades, brow powders, and it's what this does like the least, this works for me like the least well. Is that, can I speak today? This does not work well for me. And I actually got this specific NYX pencil because my boyfriend placed an Amazon order and he found this randomly in the box with the rest of his order. So someone accidentally threw in a brow pencil <laughs> in his box and he's like, oh here, you can have it. I was like, oh, what is it? <laughs> So I don't use it. It's literally brand new in the box. I kind of want to see if I can give it to like a cousin or a friend of mine because I know I'm never going to use it. Um, but I also don't want to like put it in a giveaway because I feel like not everyone could use this shade. And to be 100% honest, it's kind of weird that I got it in a random box. So <laughs> the next time I do a giveaway, I am actually going to purchase a product probably from Sephora and have it shipped directly from Sephora to the giveaway winner. But that being said, I don't use brow pencils and it's just by pure randomness that I have one. <laughs> Next, I have a face palette that I love, but I very rarely use because I'm afraid of like using it up. This is the Tarte Original Clay Play Palette. I, I love the shades in here, the bronzers and contours. Like these are some of the best powders I've ever used for bronzer and contour. They are buttery. They are so freaking pigmented. They are over pigmented. Like I, I wore them today and I forgot how pigmented they were. So I went in a little heavy and I did have to go a little heavy on the bronzer and blush today because of that. But I love these. The um, eyeshadows are also fantastic. I love using the black one in my brows. I'm actually not wearing the rest of the eyeshadows today other than um, I use this um, cream shade just to set my lid. But because I'm wearing one of the eyeshadow palettes I'm going to be talking about in a little bit. But I love this palette and I tended to use this when I was traveling because it's nice and like sturdy and flat and hard so like this works well when you're traveling which guess what we haven't traveled in well over a year so I haven't touched it because of that and also I'm afraid of using this up because I have heard the clay play 2 is not as good it's just bad and it doesn't have the same contour and bronzer shades I think it has a blush in the middle so I know I'm never gonna be able to get this again <laughs> so this is just me not wanting to reach for something that I love because I'm afraid of using it up all right, the next few are just individual products that I never reach for, and the first are some loose eyeshadows. Now, I did a few project pans over the last year or two where I've reached for uh, loose eyeshadows, but for those, it was mainly like shimmers. I have a problem when it comes to reaching for like loose matte eyeshadows and these two like specifically, these are from Geek Chic Cosmetics, but I realized it is a trend that if a loose, loose or individual shadow is matte, I don't reach for it and that's because I've got so many other choices when it comes to like good matte products that this is kind of inconvenient for me to use I kind of wish like if I could make like a thick palette and like plop in all of my loose shadows like it could be like a little chunky but I think I'd almost prefer that over just having a drawer full of these individual like little containers right it's kind of hard to see exactly what shade it is through here and they're just a little bit messier to work with you know, all petty, petty reasons, don't get me wrong, but I'm being honest with why I don't reach for these. So I think I'm going to do that. I don't know if it's going to be next month, but in an upcoming Shop My Stash, I'm going to do my best to actually pull some of the individual loose shadows that I have in my collection, but more specifically like the mattes, because I realized as I was going through, I've done a decent job of pulling and using the shimmers, but the mattes were totally neg neglected, neglected, say that five times fast. Next, this is a pot liner that honestly I don't even really like. And I, th I think I need to get rid of it. This is from Kylie Cosmetics and it's a pot yellow liner. And that's why I kept it because I thought it was so cool to have a pot yellow liner if I ever wanted to do yellow. Um, it doesn't really work that well. I don't get really nice lines on top of shadow. And I think I kept it because I wanted to try using it in my waterline. And it worked okay in my waterline, but it's a lot of work and it's messy. What I have in my waterline right now is a NYX liner in yellow. And it works amazing. <laughs> I literally bought this NYX liner in like five or six different shades because I love the formula and it stays in my waterline all day. That being said, I don't need this. <laughs> That's probably why I never reach for it because it's messy, it's hard to work with. Yeah, just yeah. So this is probably going to get decluttered. I think I'm going to do it a clutter week after I reorganize all my makeup, just kind of get it into more manageable chunks and then go through and declutter everything. I think that's what I'm going to do. So 
uh, let's see, maybe in the middle of the summer, because I am actually, so for my day job, um, it did get crazy busy, which is also another reason why this past couple of weeks were so busy for me. It did get crazy busy, but I do have summer Fridays coming up, and I do have a few days off coming up. So I'll have shorter weeks, I'll have half days on Fridays, so I'm gonna have more time to film like those kind of longer videos, and I really do want to tackle and do another big declutter, sometimes towards the middle or end of the summer, so keep your eyes out for that. Next, I have some liners that I never reached for because when I got them, they were decent. And I used them and I was happy with the quality and everything, but now that I've actually tried like other good affordable liners, these are not great anymore. And these are just every liner from ColourPop that I've tried. When I first got them, the liquid liner was okay. The waterline, to be quite honest, I got these waterline like eyeliners because everyone was hyping them up. Everyone said they were the best eyeliner ever. Everyone was talking about them. And then when I got them and I tried them and they sucked, I thought I was doing something wrong. <laughs> I thought it was me. Like I was like, maybe it's just my eyes. Maybe it's just me because everyone else loves these ColourPop liners and I don't. Um, but now that I have an eyeliner formula that works well for me and is still available in the drugstore, bye. I'm so sick of these ColourPop liners. They're not really pigmented. They stay in my waterline for like 10 minutes max. Um, and then the actual liquid liners are just such like a hassle to actually get on and they don't really make good wings and they're not as pigmented as I would like them to be. Just not a fan of the ColourPop liners. So that's why I never reach for them. I honestly can't remember the last time I actually used any of these. All right, our last section is eyeshadow palettes that I never reach for. So I went through my whole eyeshadow palette bookshelf and I pulled out some palettes that I realized I don't think I've ever touched in a, like at least a year, at least a year. So let's start first with this palette, which I think I've only used for like one or two looks and then it got buried in my collection. So this is the Unfiltered Palette by UKMA. This was a like Kickstarter that I backed in order to get this palette. It took a while. It took a few months for me to actually get the palette. And this is what it looks like. You know, I had to say I got it because I liked the idea. It was more unique than what I was seeing on the market. Otherwise, I liked the way this was laid out. I liked the colors that were included. Um, it is a bit chunky packaging. It, I think that could have been a bit thinner. Uh, but overall, I liked the execution. Now, when I finally got it, I think <laughs> I just... I think my expectations were high since it took so long for me to actually get the palette. It was expensive because it was it was either Indiegogo or it was a Kickstarter, right? Um, but I think I've used this for a total of like two looks. <laughs> I need to use this more. I do. I, I, I waited for it. I really like the shades, especially this little grungy corner right here. How pretty is that? And I need to do that. So I, I really want to use this more. But once I got it and I used it once, I literally shoved it like on the bottom of the big palette. Uh, pile, which is kind of where things go to die. <laughs> and that's also another reason why when I get those big Alex stores, I'm excited to have one be just for big palettes. And it's going to be in a way that I can actually see them better. And they're not just like stacked up in a pile, you know, so I'm excited to have that happen and hopefully bring out that palette more often. Another bigger palette. This is one that I decluttered and then brought back into my collection, but I don't think I've actually used it since I did that. Uh, and that is the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Deluxe Palette. So this is the second palette. This is the face palette slash eyeshadow palette. I have to say, mainly got this because of the face palette shades. I like these highlighters. I like the ones that I can use as like a glowy bronzer and a contour. Uh, they're very pretty. Love these. Honestly, if I could just keep this part of it, I would. Not to say that eyeshadows are bad. Eyeshadows are good. They're pigmented. They work really well. They blend. They're just so basic. <laughs> they're super basic colors. Uh, overall, as a face palette, you really can get everything that you need for a, a look here. So it is all in one. But I just never want to reach for these eyeshadows. <laughs> and I think that's what turns me off the rest of the palette. I really want to bring this out to use like the highlighters and the bronzer and contour. But I am turned off by the eyeshadows because I can get these in almost any palette that I have. So it is a shame, to be honest. I'm debating... Like, before I do it a clutter, I kind of think in my head, okay, what are some things that I kind of want to get rid of, and this might be on the chopping block, but I need to bring it out and actually use it. So, that's why, this, that's why I'm doing this video. Again, I feel like in a, in a future Shop My Stash, I should bring that out and use it for a month, just for the face palette shades, and see if I'm ever, if my opinion changes on the eyeshadows. All right, another palette that I wanted for a long time, because I really wanted to try a palette from this brand, um, but I feel like I might have picked the wrong one, and I'm just very underwhelmed by it. And that's the Rustic Glam Palette by Dominique Cosmetics. Um, I've used this like once or twice, and the 
honestly the quality was so poor that I was like oh what, what am I getting here and I really didn't want to pick it up again the shades really aren't that pigmented and they're pretty hard to blend out so I was just a bit disappointed I was expecting a lot more from this uh, especially because I heard people rave about this palette but it just so this is another one that's like on the chopping block but I, I haven't reached for this one because the quality was so bad the first few times I tried it so I feel like I need to put this one on the chopping block and pull it out and like try it once or twice more and if I really still don't like it it's gonna go this one makes no sense because I wanted this palette so bad and they discontinued it and I just wanted it and wanted it almost bought it online but then didn't and then I saw it in a TJ Maxx and I picked it up for like ten dollars and then I was so happy to finally have it I added it to my collection and I think I've used it twice this is the Too Faced chocolate bonbons palette I loved the aesthetic of this palette like look how cute everything is it's little hearts you've got some cute cool tone shades in here I wanted this so bad and then I finally oh I just realized I never took off I never took off the window sticky or the mirror sticky. Want to take it off with me? Oh, that's so much better. But yeah, that being said, I haven't used it enough to notice that that wasn't that was still on there. I like the shades. I like the smell. I know Too Faced. A lot of people don't like the scented Too Faced palettes, but I kind of like them. Uh, but I, I like this palette. I just never reach for it. Why don't I reach for it? This is another one where I need to reach for it. But I'm pretty sure I've really only used this like two or three times. Which is silly because I wanted it so bad. All right, next. I think this is my last balm palette that I have. Because um, I used to have a couple more of these, but then I realized that I was only keeping them because of the packaging and it, I never really used them, including this one. I can't remember the last time I actually pulled this one out to use. This is the Meat Matrimony palette. Packaging is adorable. Look, there he is. And then you've got a nice big mirror and then all of these matte shades like the name would suggest. They're really pretty. Um, I don't do all matte looks. And I'm pretty bad at bringing out matte specific shades to work with other shades. Um, again, I feel like this would be a really good travel palette. But who's traveling? Not us. At least not until I'm fully vaccinated, which is going to be another week at least. I think the first time I'm going to be traveling is in September, and it's a road trip just, you know, to Long Island, which I'm in Jersey. That's not far, <laughs> and I'm going to stay with friends. But, yeah. They're very basic shades, which is what it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be very, like, bridal shades. I keep this because of nostalgia and because they, like, I can justify, like, I, I, I could probably use these, you know? But do I? No. No, I do not. And I should. And the packaging is so cute. Look at him. He's so cute. So yeah, I'm probably going to keep this because it is my last balm palette. I think I had two more of these matte palettes that I got rid of. Um, so he's the last one standing. <laughs> like the bachelor. Last but not least, this one surprised me because when I got this palette, I was so in love with it. And I did so many looks. One of the first tutorials ever on my YouTube channel was using this palette. But I realized like looking at it, I don't know why, but there's this one guy on a motorcycle that like speeds down our street every day at a random time. I don't get it. But so I realized looking at this palette, I couldn't remember the last time I pulled it out to use it, which was sad because I love it so much. And I think the brand is now being rebranded or it's defunct. But this is from Kylie Cosmetics and this is the Blue Honey palette. I remember how much I loved this palette. I give this a raving review and I'm actually wearing it on my eyes today. It's still a fantastic palette. I like it. <laughs> I like the color story. I like the quality. I like the packaging. It's simple but it works and I like the way that the shades are laid out. Like to me this is a very satisfying way to lay out a palette like this and it's just so pretty. But I was so sad when I realized like I cannot remember the last time I used this palette. So I pulled it out and I used it today. It is so pretty and I need to use this more. So that is everything. Those are most of the makeup products in my collection that I very rarely or never use. Do you have any products in your collection that you don't use? Let me know down below. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.